Well, yeah, it seems that uh, the question of identity has become an obsession, uh, but it's not something new. Uh, it's, it's something that uh, probably we have inherited from a long history, from the 15th century with uh, colonization and with the development of capitalism. Most of the categories that we still use today, they are to be found uh, really within this tradition, colonial capitalist tradition from the 15th century on. Uh, some of these categories, we have identified with them up to the point that we believe, that we say I am, and that we believe that we embody these identities. For instance, uh, femininity and masculinity as we know them. We, we cannot say that in nature or in reality there is uh, femininity and masculinity. There is probably a multiplicity of beings that can never be unsigned or just like reduced to the binary. The same way uh, homosexuality and heterosexuality are uh, very recent modern categories that were invented in the 19th century. Nevertheless, Today, uh, most people identify with them up to the point that they believe they are heterosexual or homosexual. Why should we identify with pathological notions of the 19th century, right? Uh, I think that they do not allow for the complexity of uh, pleasure and relationships to develop. They just uh, answer to the um, difference between reproductive and non-reproductive sexualities, which today I think is just ridiculous that we still identify with those, right? So for me, the question is really like more about depatriarchalizing, decolonizing uh, discourse. It's not just like, oh, let's like throw away identity. Well, identity is a very complex question, but I think that the, the movements uh, for instance, the gay and lesbian movement or the LGBT movement, even the transsexual movement, uh, the question would be like, is our objective, our aim within these movements is to define and redefine identity and uh, make identity visible and construct identity, or maybe is to uh, invent new practices of freedom. The same way, for instance, race is completely uh, a colonial construction. There is no empirical base for, for race difference. No one today would argue, besides like probably like a, a very racist uh, person, would argue that race exists, does exist. Nevertheless, those categories have been embedded within the uh, structure of the state, within institutions, up to the point that they work today as techniques of government. They're being used to govern populations, to define the conditions of uh, life and death, to establish differences between beings. So for me, it's not so much about like including these identities uh, within the normal uh, history of art or within the, let's say, institutions or within the state, but rather um, criticize and unbuild the technologies of power that had created those institutions and that still promote uh, technologies of power and violence within many of these institutions. One of my concerns now in contemporary politics is the, that we are living through a revolution, right? Like a, basically like a huge movement of decolonizing, depatriarchalizing, and this is a starting, a starting from the, uh, the, the late 19th century and increasingly through the, the 60s and 70s. But of course, this is happening now. The, uh, the reactions against that have been numerous along history. The Second World War is a, is a huge reaction against the 20s, which was a moment of openness in all different ways. If you think about gender politics, but if you also think about uh, physics, about uh, the, the invention of new bi biological categories and so on. So we could see uh, fascism 
an uneven communism in some ways. Sometimes we could see them as, as reactions uh, to, to the, the, the possibility of changing these epistemologies, changing, changing these regimes of knowledge, these techniques of government, right? What is happening today is very similar. The question now is that while these, uh, let's say, archaic discourses are bringing back notions of the nation state, the family, um, nature, and the natural body, and so on. While this is happening exactly at the same time, and this is a very archaic discourse that is almost coming, I would say, from the 15th century on, right? But what at the same, exactly at the same time, what we have is a completely new set of technologies, hugely modifying what we understand by living by the living body, right? In, the, in terms of automation, mechanization of the living being, mechanization of reproduction, externalization of reproduction activities, um, the, the fabrication on, of non-organic organs, and extens different extensions of the body, all the ones that, that we use now that have to do with communication, uh, the internet, the, uh, the uh, social network, and so on and so forth. As a philosopher, what I'm seeing is that what is happening is, is almost like a mirage. While sciences and the market are fully developing like a new set of technologies that will completely transform ordinary life and the access that we have to many of the things that we know, including the full destruction of the planet, including expansion of nuclear technologies. These are the radical questions that we should be discussing. What is life today and how are we gonna continue living within this, uh, in this planet, right?